Where is the low voltage short at? Why do I keep blowing fuses? How do I process of eliminate and figure out where the low voltage short could be? If you don't know anything about low voltage shorts and you haven't seen my other videos about finding low voltage shorts, I've got a couple videos. I'll drop those in the link in the description. And those two videos with today's videos will make you more well-rounded as a service technician in the field. And you'll be able to find out what you should do when you have a low voltage short and your unit keeps blowing fuses. Today, I've got a really good one because I don't have this happen often and it's rare for me to turn the thermostat to emergency heat and then that's when we find the fuse is blowing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. Here's the package heat pump that I'm working on. Model number 030, two and a half ton and 2006 was a manufacturer date. It's been a pretty good unit. Got two panels off, one panel for the heater kit and the contactor that energizes the heater kit. And this is the low voltage wiring right here at the bottom of this panel. Here is where the fuse is placed. And this is wired into the secondary of the transformer. So this fuse pops instead of this transformer burning up. We've got a relay here and we've got a contactor, controls, compressor, outdoor fan coming on, CFM board, defrost board, start capacitor, potential relay for the compressor, wiring for the indoor fan, dual capacitor. So we would have a fuse here, but I'm not gonna put this fuse back in because I don't want to have to replace that fuse. So I've got a little resettable here this is really nice and you can see it's three amp if you can see that three amp pick one of these up they're great so until we find out where the short is we don't have to replace a fuse every time we pop it so this will pop out there are obvious things that i look for what i do first is i go to the thermostat and i change from each mode to the next to see if the fuse pops that way i know Okay, it's not in the cooling mode, it's in the heating mode. Okay, it's not in the heating mode, it's in emergency heat mode. So change the thermostat from off to heat, from heat to cool, from cool to emergency heat. And when I change the mode from heat to emergency heat, in the emergency heat mode, that's when the fuse popped. So I knew for a fact that, hey, it's probably something to do with the emergency heat. And I'm gonna get to that, but I'm gonna show you a couple other things that I did. So I opened up the condenser section. Make sure that you turn the breakers off, of course. Then you've got three screws. You take the top off this fan. You look down in here and you see if any of the wires are touching the copper. Uh, most likely the pressure switch, the sensors, something like that. Usually pressure switches. That can cause a short in the low voltage wiring. So check the obvious. I found some thermostat wiring over here that was damaged. And whenever you have thermostat wire that is open like this, it can become easily damaged. Look for nicks in the wire. Look for spots where water has gotten into that nick or that crack. And you might find water, you might find corrosion. And then if you have damaged wire, replace the wire. If it's not in conduit, it's gonna get easily damaged. It could get hit by a weed eater or animal can come out here and chew on it so i replaced some of the stat wire also found a splice and i replaced a section of the wire i had to take some of this rain shield off which is very easy i use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer bend this back took out these screws right here and then i just took out one of the side panels not the top but the side piece so check the condenser section make sure you don't find any wires touching copper check the thermostat wire if it's laying on the ground if it's not in conduit replace some of it if you have to it could be the thermostat wire it could be the thermostat now we are going to do some tests out here but first i'm going to show you and we're going to do a recap on what i did with the thermostat so at the thermostat i pushed the mode button and i went through and tested the cooling the heating and then the emergency heat and whenever i test the emergency heat, that's when the fuse popped. Just in case you wanna know what type of thermostat this is, this is a ACONT 402, American Standard. I have installed a lot of these. If you want the manual, type that number in and type in installation manual 
and you can download the installation manual from the internet. We're gonna leave the thermostat in the off position. So this is the schematic. This is the secondary power that comes from the transformer. You got primary 230 volt, secondary 24 volt. We got a blue wire and a red wire. And the fuse is wired in series with that red wire. See that? Okay. And then that wire right there has a wire nut. And this is the thermostat, room thermostat. And then this is the low voltage wiring here. Okay, so the meter is on volts AC. I'm also gonna be measuring the voltage on that secondary of the transformer there. And the way I do that is turn the meter to volts AC, hit select, also turn my little light on. First thing I'm gonna do, measure the voltage, secondary voltage. Okay. So R and B. Okay. We'll see what we got here. 27 volts. Okay. We got voltage coming in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test using our alligator clips from the R. Okay. To the yellow first that's the cooling mode and we're going to check and see if our amp draw goes up because we know we got a problem amp draw gets too high we're going to pop the little resettable okay we'll do the fan first okay so we just energized the g r and g fan you can hear the fan coming on no rise in amp draw okay so fuse hasn't popped let's check it Look at that, no fuse popped. Okay, now let's test the cooling. Okay. Okay, amp draw went up a little bit from I think 0.8 to 1.0, but that's not enough to pop our fuse. Now, this right here is W1 and W2. This is the auxiliary heat strips. That brown wire right there, white to those two browns. Now we're going to energize the heater kit. Okay. I don't see any change. Contactor isn't pulled in. You can see there's some space in between the contacts and the plunger. So it may take a moment. That power may run through this board here. Let me know what kind of low voltage short problems you've had in the field. Post those in the comments so everybody else can learn. Definitely hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. Also, don't forget about those videos that I put down in the link in the description for troubleshooting low voltage shorts. Emergency heat. Okay, now. Emergency heat on. Okay, now. Yeah. Okay, thermostat just went blank. So that's what I experienced when I put it on emergency heat. Let's go check and see if the fuse is popped. Okay. Fuse has definitely popped. Now, thermostat should still be in emergency heat mode. So it shouldn't take very long for it to pop again. Let's see. I'm going to see if the amp draw goes up and if the fuse pops. seven amps it's about to pop so you heard that contactor pull in and then you heard it pop wow let's reset it watch it again all right now we're gonna watch this contactor pull in and then this fuse pop contactor cools energized and the fuse Pops. So, if you don't know what the problem is, let me show you. Contactors coils pulled in, six amps. Now it's out. And let's see. So, we got our fuse popped. Now, in every other mode, we didn't have a high amp draw because the short was not present. But whenever the 
call for W1, W2 was made and this contact coil was energized, that's when the short was present. Now, I've got the contactor loose so we can take it out and look at it. And look at that. Oh, you can't even see that coil. It's all covered up. <laughs> that's great. That's not a very good example. <laughs> so this is what a bad coil looks like. This is what a good coil looks like. See the difference? This coil looks burnt. This one looks nice. So I got to put this back together now. Okay, so I put the new contactor back together. You can see it's got a guard over it or some cover for the coil so you can't really see it, unlike the old contactor. I'm gonna install this contactor right here. I've got my 230 volts coming into the contactor here. This right here is the coil wiring. So we got our C, our common, and our W1, W2 wire. This is what energizes the coil of the contactor. And I've got two browns and two blacks, and this is the power going to the two heaters and then the power going from the two heaters back to the contactor. So we got our line in and our line out. See that? We got brown going in, black going out. So you can see how that's wired there. Okay, it's wired up. Breakers back on. Coil for this contactor just energized. And that's the amp draw. We no longer have seven amps. Fuse is no longer going to pop. We no longer have a low voltage short. So whenever the customer turns the emergency heat on, which both of these heaters should be drawing amps. Oh, that's both the heaters, that's 40. Okay, let's just do one. Okay, 20 on this one, and then 20 on this one. So heater kit is working very well says the amperage should be around 36 well 42 for 240 volts so and that's what we're we have is 240 volts so good deal awesome no more short all right now how did I make this take and use two male spades two wires that have two female spades on one end and that way you can put those on the resettable fuse because the resettable fuse has uh, male spades so very easy now we can install the 5 amp fuse take these alligator clamps off go ahead and put all the wire nuts back on and tuck these wires back in here awesome so it's on emergency heat mode screens no longer blank fuse is no longer popping we are good to go go ahead and turn it back to regular heating hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you learned something if you did learn something let me know what it was down in the comments if you got a question put those there questions can become content but if you don't have a question that is okay let me know who you are and where you're from. Hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell ding so you know what I'm doing. Don't forget to check out those other two videos that I've got on troubleshooting low voltage shorts. And if you want more videos, I've got a playlist called HVAC Tips for Technicians. Got over 400 videos, real life experience as an HVAC technician in the field, many problems, many experiences that you can learn from and use to make your career better as an HVAC technician or a contractor. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. My viewers, my subscribers, my members, you're awesome. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me. All right, next service call, low voltage short. Imagine that. Customer said they found the fuse blown, so they replaced it themselves. And of course, what did it do? It popped again. So they said that they looked on YouTube and they found that there were people saying that it could be the control, the thermostat. So they replaced the thermostat and of course, same problem. So Tad's here, Taddy's here to save the day. Okay. 
back on. Now let's go outside and check the obvious. Here's the outdoor unit. So what I found so far is wire was rubbing against this pipe. Wire was rubbing against this pipe. So I need to check this wire and see. And look at that. Looks like a little bit of wire is exposed, maybe. So probably need to put a wire tie on this, get it away, and then put some tape, maybe some rubber tape on these sections where we see a little wire. That could be the problem. Got the panel off to see what the board looks like. This unit doesn't even have a contactor, so that's very interesting. Oh, start capacitor starting to leak a little bit. That may need to be replaced. Hmm, don't see any burn spots. Power's back on. Very interesting setup here. Okay. Okay, so this is a ream unit. And you can see right here, low voltage wiring. We've got R, we got common, we got red, common, green, W1, W2, and Y. So no O. Okay, now let's go look at the thermostat. All right, so we got the blue wire on the B terminal. Common is the brown wire. C. Looks like we got it hooked up correctly. Good deal. It's working. Another short fixed. This one easier than the last. Probably need to tell the customer to shut it off because that uh, fan motor is pretty unbalanced with all that ice on the blades. So turn it off. Let it thaw out remove that ice and then turn it back on. A little bit of bonus content for you. I didn't expect to have another low voltage short for my next service call, but hey, good deal.